your time here. Do you believe in you? Hi, and welcome to Fact Again, uh, as the sun goes down here. Um, I would like to talk uh, on, on the topic of the sun, specifically something that uh, I kind of developed on my own and then discovered there was a whole science about it. Yay! Uh, it's called thermal tides. And um, so just for a moment, I want you to imagine that we like just, you know, like put the little switch and the, and the sun goes out. We let the whole earth cool down a little bit. Okay, so, you know, bikini season gets delayed everywhere. Um, but when we bring it back up, we're going to start, we're going to put it like right here over uh, Egypt, I think, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and... Uh, and that will, uh, if you remember your high school chemistry, cause a number of things. One, the, all the Egyptians will be like, hey, what is this? Hey! You know. um, none of them will be saying, look, I'm trapped in a box. Um, maybe, I don't know, they have Egyptian mimes. Um, <clears throat> but with that chemistry in mind, hot air expands. Okay. So, based on, you know, putting the sun right here, we have like a circle around this whole Egyptian area, the whole Nile region, that is going to have the most intense sun. And then successive radial circles from there that go outwards that say less and less intense sun until you get to like... East Asia or the United States when you're approaching basically the twilight zone or complete darkness. And, you know, I'm sure like California and Egypt are nearly completely across from each other. So California is in complete darkness as per usual. <laughs> okay. Um, so what does this mean? Ah, you're a savvy one. Yeah. You asked the right questions. What does this mean? It means that um, from about here, uh, all of the air is being pushed out radially in a circle, okay? In a sphere, in a sphere, in a circle, sphere. So the stuff that, that, that's getting pushed down will push against ground, and it will sort of reflect back up or provide pressure for everything else going off. The stuff that goes up just goes up. And once it gets up into the atmosphere, it stirs stuff around up there. We don't know what the heck's going on there. Okay? The stuff that goes out is the stuff that, that I'm particularly interested in here. Okay? So we've got stuff going from Egypt to, you know, West Africa to South Africa, uh, into India, and up into Eastern Europe. Um... So, um, it's just shoving out that way. Now, as the sun, we have to develop, as a race, a better way of describing how the sun and the earth interact. Sun doesn't move from here to here. It does doodly squat like that. It's the earth rotating. And we linguistically need to fix this, or people will continue to get the idea that the sun is running around us and we are the center of the universe. This is part of the problem that scientists have is relying on old terminology that no longer applies. Okay, sorry, I set that soapbox aside. So, um, but using old terminology, um, as the sun moves from Egypt to West Africa, now West Africa is getting heated up and it's pushing air towards Western Europe, uh, towards, you know, uh, the Bay of, I have no idea because I'm an American, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, and, you know, back to Egypt. Now, Egypt is just cooling off. So it's going, yeah, give me that. And the winds going from West Africa to Egypt are the most intense because in all of those other places in East Europe and, and the Atlantic and the Bay of, I have no idea because I'm an American, um, they all uh, 
they all already have cold air. So when the warm air pushes up against them, the cold air is like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting up. Don't worry. Yep, 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 yep. Getting up, getting up. Don't worry. Just, 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 just a minute. Okay. Um, and this applies everywhere in the world. But uh, so I know that the three of the people who have bothered to make comments are all in the United States. So we're going to take it over here. And we're going to start with my, my home, the place where I was raised in Michigan, where we all pointed our hands to give directions. Um, so if it's morning in Michigan, that means the sun is out in, uh, you know, somewhere in the Atlantic, maybe even Greenwich. Okay. Um, it's partying with the, with the Brits, you know, um, which means that it's chilly, nipply cold, and the hot air is being pushed towards it. We're like, mm, I'll pass. Okay. But well, as the sun moves across to Michigan, okay, we get uh, Michigan's air heats up and expands and pushes out. Okay, um, that's noon. Um, so we don't get the uh, east to west wind too much in the morning. But it sometimes happens. It's just enough to ring the chimes. Okay, but. When the sun gets over here towards like California or, or Washington or Oregon uh, and starts heating the air up over there, Michigan starts cooling down again and it's like gimme, 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 gimme. Okay? And then the breezes going from Washington to Michigan are tremendous. And this occurs everywhere. I didn't notice it so much when I was in Michigan because we have trees everywhere and you just, you're not as in touch with the breezes. But down here in California, where we go out, go out and party in the desert, there's a whole lot of nothing around you in the mornings and in the evenings. And so when the wind comes by, you either deal with it or run away. <laughs> and most people who run away means get in the cars and go home. Um, but, uh, same applies to, to Burning Man or in, any kind of exposed area. You're going to feel these winds in a, in a much stronger fashion. So that is thermal tiding. Not to be confused with solar tiding, which a lot like the moon, you know, is a gravitational effect on the Earth and it affects the waves and whatnot. Not that. I won't try to explain that one because I'm not sure who wins when it's a fight between the moon and the sun. Um, and uh, that is actually a nice little segue into our one shout out uh, this week, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, I just wanted to say, yeah, you know, Neil, I understand sometimes you step out of your comfort box and you say things that, you know, ha end up having you chew on shoe leather. Uh, it happens to everyone. Um, I think everyone can say I've been a bit of a blowhard at one point or another. Um, I understand that you're a communicator first. Uh, I'm a astronomer second and, and a general scientist far third uh, when, you're, when you're doing those sorts of things. And, um, you know, I, I'm just uh, saying that I want to take a little step back and, you know, dab, you know. So that's it for Factaganda. Uh, we'll be back whenever we get back.